career spanning more than 30 years, legendary bassist Rudy Sarzo is recognized as one of the top musicians in the history of rock and roll. And like many other artists, his journey began on a whim. Being a Cuban-born rocker, especially in the 60s, was, it was, quite, it was quite a journey because uh, I got the bug to play rock when I saw the Beatles playing at Sullivan Show. I was a kid, you know, but I saw all the girls screaming and say, I want that, you know. My parents went, as we were leaving, uh, we actually went up, up to New York first when we left Miami. My, my brother and, and me and a couple of the band members and uh, we had a car with a, with a U-Haul trailer in the back. And they looked at each other, my mom and dad, and said, oh, they'll be back in a week. <laughs> Come on, feel the noise. I actually started playing with Quiet Riot when Quiet Riot was just a local band in Los Angeles with Randy Rhodes in the band. And uh, then Randy left Quiet Riot, joined Ozzy Osbourne, went over to England, recorded a couple albums, and when they were looking for a new bass player, he's the one who recommended me. So I was literally sleeping on the floor when I got the phone call to join Ozzy and say, hey man, you know, we tried all these guys and and Randy keeps saying that you're the guy and they want you to come down. So I went from sleeping on the floor to like living in this mansion in, in the hills, you know. The, the only reason why I left Ozzy was because Randy died in a tragic plane crash. They, Sharon Ozzy took great care of me. I, I, I was incredibly happy, but after Randy died, it was painful to continue, you know. So, so here I am, I'm, I'm back with, with what is called Quiet Riot, the mental health version of the band. When I was playing in town with Quiet Riot, they considered Quiet Riot to be a dinosaur. Mama, we're all crazy now. And at that time, we couldn't even get a manager. We couldn't even get, you know, a, getting on a tour was very hard, getting some kind of support from the record company, nothing, you know. So we just pretty much did it on our own. We really believe in what we were doing, and if you really embrace and you love what you're doing, that's it. You know, you start from there. While Rudy has definitely made his mark in rock and roll history, it was his pioneering work in the name of rock in Espanol that has helped cement his influence on music. There was a period that all of a sudden you have uh, artists such as Gloria Stefan and John Cicada competing with Maná, Jaguares, ha all those you know big bands, and they're going like, oh, wait a minute, you know we have to like really separate it because it was a narrow category. A friend of mine from from Naras calls me up and says, listen, you know we need to do this. You have to come up with an example of a hundred releases, labels, bands that are actually signed to a label to in order to create a new category. For, for the Grammys. Can you do it for us? <laughs> yeah, so I did, I put together the all 100 artists and, and groups releases. Rock is the language of freedom. Doesn't matter what language. To me, it's so important that you deliver the message in the language of your country so everybody can understand what your message is.